Now we're going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. Suppose you have two polynomials like these, 3x squared plus 2x plus 6, that's one, and 4x squared plus 10x plus 3, that's another. And if you want to add them, the problem might be written like this, 3x squared plus 2x plus 6, that's the first one, plus 4x squared plus 10x plus 3. And the parentheses here make it clear that you have two things that are added together. This plus this. And the parentheses help you see exactly what those two things are. But the parentheses in this case don't actually help us do the adding. And in this case they're really superfluous. They could be removed and the problem could just be written like this. 3x squared plus 2x plus 6 plus 4x squared plus 10x plus 3. In other words, I could think of it as these six things being added together. And to add those, I simply combine like terms. So let's do that. I've got two x squared terms. That's 3x squared and 4x squared. Those add up to 7x squared. And then here's an x term and here's another x term. 2x plus 10x gives me a 12x. And I have a 6 there and a 3, and those add up to a 9. So 7x squared plus 12x plus 9 is my answer. And combining all the like terms to simplify the expression, that's the goal. Once you've done that, the, the polynomials have been added, and the result has been properly simplified. Here's an example. 3x squared plus 8x plus 2x squared minus x. Well, the parentheses, again, help us to visually distinguish the two things we're adding, this and this, but they don't really help us do the adding. And in this case, they can simply be removed. We can just write the problem as 3x squared plus 8x plus 2x squared minus x. And you don't actually have to write that out. You can just mentally remove the parentheses and realize that you're adding up these four terms. And you simply combine the like terms. So we have two x squared terms. Those add up to a 5x squared. And then we have an 8x and a minus x, and those add up to a 7x. So 5x squared plus 7x is the answer. Now we'll talk about subtracting one polynomial from another. And in this example, I have this polynomial minus this one. And in this case, the parentheses are very, very important. Watch this example. Look at this second polynomial here. This says this first one minus this second one. So this entire polynomial over here is being subtracted from the first one. This, this minus sign means minus this, minus that entire group in parentheses. That means we're subtracting the 3x squared, we're subtracting the 7x, and we're subtracting the 1. So if I want to rewrite this problem without the parentheses, it would look like this. 8x squared plus 9x plus 5 minus 3x squared minus 7x minus 1. And then I can combine like terms. I have 8x squared and minus 3x squared. That gives me a 5x squared. And I have a 9x and a minus 7x. That gives me a positive 2x, and then you see the 5 and the minus 1 give me a plus 4. So 5x squared plus 2x plus 4. And that's the answer. Now let me say this. There's another way to think about this problem. I can look at this minus sign, and I can think of the minus sign as being distributed across the terms in this parentheses. So the minus sign applies to the 3x squared, the minus sign applies to the 7x, and the minus sign applies to the 1. It changes the sign of everything in this group. So then I would rewrite it like that. 8x squared plus 9x minus 5. And then when I write these, I apply this negative sign to each of these terms and it changes the sign. So the 3x squared becomes a negative 3x squared. 
the 7x becomes a minus 7x and the 1 becomes a minus 1. And then I combine the terms as before. My 8x squared and my minus 3x squared give me a 5x squared and then the 9x and the minus 7x give me a plus 2x and the, the oh that should be a, a plus 5 right there. That's a, the plus 5 and a minus 1 give me a plus 4. And that's the same answer as before. But thinking of it that way, thinking of distributing the negative sign is a helpful and important way to understand the problem. All right, here's another example. And this example shows that you have to be careful when multiple negative signs are involved. My first goal here is going to be to rewrite this problem without the parentheses and realize that this negative sign will change the sign of each of these terms. Remember, I'm subtracting this whole thing. So I'm subtracting the 3x squared. And when I subtract negative 4x, you have to realize that subtracting negative 4x is the same as adding 4x. And then I'm also subtracting the 2. And again, another way to think of that is distributing the negative sign. Think of taking this negative sign and applying it to each of those three things. And that means that it changes the sign of each of those three things. So the 3x squared will become a negative 3x squared. And the negative 4x will become a positive 4x. And that positive 2 will become a negative 2. So now I'll rewrite the problem without the parentheses. 10x squared plus 8x minus 7. This first polynomial doesn't change. And then I have minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. And then I combine like terms. 10x squared minus 3x squared, that gives me 7x squared. And then 8x plus 4x is 12x. So I have 7x squared plus 12x. And then I have a minus 7 and a minus 2, which gives me minus 9. So 7x squared plus 12x minus 9 is the answer. And this next example demonstrates the fact that terms don't always combine nicely, and that's okay. In this case, I have one polynomial plus another one. So I can just rewrite the problem with the parentheses gone. 4x squared plus 8x plus 1 plus 6x squared minus 3x. That, that's a 4x cubed right there, 4x cubed. And there are no other x cubed terms. So the 4x cubed just ends up with my answer ends up in my answer right there. When I'm combining like terms, I don't have any other like terms to combine that with. And then the 8x here can combine with the negative 3x to give me a plus 5x. And then I have a, a 6x squared here, plus 6x squared, and you see the plus 1. So that's my answer. It's, it's uh, common to write the polynomials, though, with the higher power terms first. So I would write my 4x cubed, and then I would write my 6x squared, and then my 5x, and then my plus 1. So you see I have my power of 3, and then my power of 2, and then this is x to the 1, the power of 1, and then the constant term. And writing the terms in order of decreasing degree is standard practice.